What's up? Dominic Blackwell Cooper here. If you've ever read a graphic novel, then you've seen pure imagination and inspiration at work. In Copenhagen, there's an architect with the mind of a graphic novelist who's been commissioned to create a bold urban mobility upgrade. We're about to take you on a trip to Loop City. I think, I think originally I, I never had any intention of becoming an architect. I wanted to become a, a graphic novelist. Um, then, because we don't have a, a comic book academy in uh, Denmark, but we have a Royal Danish Art Academy where they educate the artists and architects. That, that was the path I, I went. It's a question of having, uh, you know, equal amount of intelligence invested in creating the optimal possibilities for each form of, uh, of human movement. So if it's for pedestrians, for bicycles, uh, for cars, for uh, uh, public transportation with the train or buses, etc., that you somehow have to uh, plan carefully for each each way of moving around in the city, so that because like no form of uh, of mobility is better than another one. And the idea of the loop city is really try to find as many good ways of, of integrating these different forms of, uh, of movement. We were commissioned by the 10 municipalities of Metropolitan Copenhagen to look at, at a potential urban development along a prospect train line. Since 1947, they made something called the Five Finger Plan, which is essentially like a palm with fingers. Each finger represents a corridor of dense uh, urban fabric and of course in the middle you have uh, downtown Copenhagen. As, as the cities evolved, the, the fingers grew longer and longer, uh, turning it into this sort of monstrous claw, uh, but also making that the connection to downtown was getting longer and longer and you had more and more congestion. So the loop city essentially will be a sort of bracelet that goes around the town and connects also with the Swedish side. We proposed that by actually plugging into the existing infrastructure of trains and, and highways, by making only a four kilometer long bridge, uh, we can actually create a, a single metropolitan uh, loop uh, where no location within this loop is more than 40 minutes away by public transportation. This, this new loop connecting the two countries will have the same size as the San Francisco Bay Area in the States. And it will, essentially it will form one of the first uh, true cross-border regions. And we're imagining this loop consisting not only of a traditional infrastructure for people, but also infrastructures for, for waste handling, for drinking water, uh, for energy and for biodiversity. One idea could actually be to, um, to combine like the electric line already existing to you know, give the train electricity actually combine that with the, the possibility to recharge uh, electric cars. Or another thing could be that at night, where the train doesn't run that often, you could use the train line to, uh, to transport um, uh, waste to, uh, to nearby located uh, waste to energy plants. Finally, uh, a sort of a smart power grid that combines the hydroelectricity of Sweden with the wind power of Denmark. So it became this sort of um, infrastructure for all aspects of, of human life. So the Loop City could potentially change the suburbs from being these uh, kind of live and sleep, uh, kind of outskirts of the, of the real city into like a, a new kind of urban centers where you have real public life going on at the streets. You have uh, life around the stations, you have uh, businesses, uh, cafes and uh, thriving commercial areas uh, going on around the stations uh, along the Loop. So we believe since, since urbanity is all about creating density, it's about bringing people together and about mixing functions. Like instead of cities growing endlessly out in the landscape, uh, taking up more and more resources, spreading people far, further and further apart, 
we have to figure out a way to, to let the city grow within the city and kind of breathe new life into the existing urban areas that you actually have uh, in, the, in the suburbs of Copenhagen. So by densifying our existing urban areas, we can create a much more resource efficient city and also one that's much more livable. Wow, Bjarke Engel's mission to densify Copenhagen suburbs is both mind-blowing and inventive, making that historic city even more of a must-visit destination. And the best part is, it's constantly evolving, just like a great comic book. Until next time, I'm Dominic Blackwell Cooper on the Urban Mobility Watch.